Well, hello folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets, we do it from a neoclassical perspective, each time asking ourselves just one question, what happened today, what does it tell us about the coming ones? I do this show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube under the channel L.A. Little. As far as what did happen today, if we look at the numbers, uh, we had a uh, fairly strong day again. And let's get the numbers up. Uh, that push up early was finally taken away. We got a little pull down at the end. Uh, the, the NASDAQ, the S&P, all of them were flat. The only one that was down uh, in a large way was the Russell. That push up though, even though it was taken away, after hours, earnings once more came out, surprised to the upside, both Intel, Netflix. Intel sold back down after hours. It was up 6%. It was up about 2% towards the close of the after-hour session. Netflix was up almost 7% on larger numbers of subscribers uh, than was expected. Earlier this morning, we had more banks. The banks were up, USB, uh, uh, Bank of America, both of those up 4% today. Financials were leading on the S&P 500. Elsewhere, gold pushes down, sets new lows, although it does battle back. Gold stocks themselves set new lows as a group. Silver down a buck seventy uh, a percent seventy seven, uh, point two eight on the numbers fourteen forty three. Oil down again almost three percent. Dollar was up almost half a percent. Euro down. Yelling on the hill. Yelling sounding a little bit more hawkish. That pushed the dollar up against the euro. Let's take a look at the indexes. So we actually had over-unders today. So we go over, back under, we have more volume. That says that you can go back up there and test again tomorrow. And given the after hours numbers, we may in fact do that. You've had a 4% rise off the bottom five days straight up. Today, over, under, after an extended move. But because you got more volume, you don't have the two bar reversal. If we look at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ also pushes higher over, under, a little bit more volume, same exact setup. If you look at the NDX, NDX over, under, a little bit more volume, same setup. And then the Russell finally, the Russell over, under, takeaway bar, that's the only difference. And the takeaway bar suggests that you are going to get more push down on this Russell. So the Russell was the leader on the way up in terms of the signals telling us this market was going to make it higher. If you remember what we were talking about back then was this bar, the Russell pushed into it here. That was the first of the indexes to do so and got over the big inside days that were taking place. That was back on Friday. So that was the first hint that this market was going to continue higher. Sure enough, that's what we got. Well, what do we get today? We get the Russell doing a takeaway bar what is that telling us? It's telling us that more than likely we're going to see these indexes pull back now as a result. So if the Russell still true to form here and is the leader, the Russell is telling us that that's probably what we should be expecting. Let's go over and look at the world markets, uh, see what they did. Uh, you know, we had uh, the Greek situation still going on. They're trying to pass through the uh, changes that they've been uh, requested. Uh, in terms of the EU and let's go look at Europe first. So if we go into uh, the CACs first and on the CACs uh, light volume, I, it looks like I didn't get my volume yesterday. We'll have to get that fixed but as far as what we got today was a continuation to the upside. It pushed over, stayed over. It's got lighter volume. It's going up there. We were already talking about that this was going to try to reach up and grab these swing point highs. Well, that's what it's doing. It's almost there. We are into the meat of the resistance. If you're going to get a pullback, it's in this area. I would expect it would be anywhere in here, best case. You know, in other words, if you go the highest you can. You've had a big run, right? You've got to expect some sort of a pullback off of this. That Greek news is fully priced in at this point, in my opinion. On the DAX, uh, you've got the same situation. It's right up there. It's in the meat of the resistance, low volume. Same thing. If we look at the Shanghai, now Shanghai actually finally started to roll back over. Now remember, we had a 35% decline in the index. 
straight off the top without any kind of lift. You finally get the bounce, nice big bounce, about 12, 12 and a half percent. Now you're starting to get the pullback. This pullback is going to be the key as to whether the range is in or not. And I suspect this area right there is the one that you're going to expect it to come back into. So I'm looking for on the SEC, on the Shanghai index, I'm looking for it to come back into that uh, 30, about 3600 or so is, is where you would expect it to try to get back to. The, this bar demarcates the numbers and that low on that bar is, let's get the numbers, 3653. Uh, so 3653 looks to be the number. Let's go over to Hong Kong. Now Hong Kong is trading in sympathy with Shanghai, starting to roll over, but I think Hong Kong, you're gonna find it hold up better. The tops of these bars is where I would be looking, and that's about uh, 24, uh, 24,400. If we look at the Japan, the topics, the Nikkei, the Nikkei was up again, a little doji after a big move off the bottom where you left volume at the bottom. So I suspect you're going to see this thing come back down uh, maybe as early as tonight and start feeding back into this big gap on the way up. If we look at some of the others we haven't looked at this week, let's just run through them right quick, see what they look like. So the all ordinaries uh, popping up, a little bit of volume, that's just range trading at the lows. If we look at India, India coming back up to test the highs has no volume. I'm not sure it's going to get much farther than that. Brazil, let's see what Brazil is doing. Brazil is, is just doing the, boy, this is, this index is, is hugging the bottoms now. Brazil can't even get over this retest region on the swing point low. So Brazil still in a tough situation here. Looks to me like it's going to roll. If we look at uh, the FTSE, we haven't seen London in a while. Let's see what it looks like. So the FTSE, just like the other indexes in Europe, does a doji tonight. That looks like it's ready to roll. If we look over at uh, our friends up north in Toronto, let's see what Toronto looks like. A little bounce, nothing to it. That's probably not going much uh, farther either. Korea. Yeah, they got some volume last night. They can reach up to this gap area. And let's see, I haven't looked at Taipei in a while. And boy, that one can't even get up to do the retest, regen, bearish. So that's uh, not a good sign there. And that's chip country, matter of fact. So it'd be curious to see how Intel trades tomorrow. And then finally we go, uh, not the all ordinaries, let's go to, uh, what else we got here? How about Indonesia? Let's see what Indonesia looks like. Just nothing there. Just they're bouncing a range trade at the bottoms. So at this point, you know, looking at just the indexes themselves, they're about ready to roll. We may get a little push up tomorrow. I suspect Europe's going to try to trade down. That's probably going to weigh down the U.S. and keep it from rising very much at all. I suspect at best you get some sort of a choppy, you know, bias. Uh, not a bias, but a choppy trade, maybe a little upside. But this thing's about ready to roll and do its pullback as well. Finally, if we walk over to the ox markets, the dollar pushes up, gets over this little high from last week, and doesn't have the volume. That's a swing point high as well. I think the dollar just failed again, so the dollar still range trading. That doesn't look like that's going to change. If the dollar pulls back, you should see some of the commodities do a little bit better. Oil tried to come down, still hasn't tested that low. If you're bullish on oil, you want to see it test the low, test it with less volume and don't get under it and stay under it. If we look at the, the bonds, the bonds still wallowing down here at the lows, nothing really has happened yet. Just trading back into the gap area so far. Uh, just, just not much there, so nothing on that one. And uh, let me look at the Euro itself. Let me see what it looks like. And let's see, so it traded down. It did exactly the opposite of the dollar, didn't it? So that's uh, 107.28. Ah, got the 29. So it didn't even test. So the euro could still test. It hasn't tested, but that's pretty close within a penny. Um, it looks to me like all these are just range trading. So there's not much happening there. Over in the sectors, let's take a quick look at the sectors internal to the U.S. markets. We had biotech up big, Celgene up large again on some takeover news. That looks like that just topped out. Well, it could go higher, but that 
that, that's not a good signal when you get an ugly bar like that. And but you just didn't get enough volume expansion here to make me think that it's a range again. But uh, I, I certainly wouldn't be chasing that at this price point on the IBB. If we look at the ITB, the homes construction, uh, they came off. They came off the top as they were trying to test that high. I uh, didn't quite get to it. That looks to me like uh, just range trading still. Transports, now these have been weak. They came back up. They were trying to do a retest regen. They failed right at it. Look at that. It's pretty amazing how that stuff works. I mean, you come back up, you break a swing point low. What happens when you come back to it? That's where the sellers are going to jump on it if, in fact, they still want to sell it short. That's what they did. Now, remember, the, the transports had been the first index to trade back into the low, the highs of the lows of last year. So the transports, it's going to take them a while, but they're going to try to get to this low before it's over with. And so the transports are continuing to be a place to short if you're looking for shorts. Semiconductors, we, as I said tonight, we had Intel come out. You got a big volume low there uh, on the daily. You're pressing lows with volume. Uh, these semis aren't going anywhere. I don't care where Intel goes. I doubt Intel is going to go very far. XLB, also looking pretty weak. Boy, when you look at the sectors, it's hard to get too bullish on the market, isn't it? Look at your XLE trying to roll back over to come down and test that low again. If you look at the financials, this is the only hot group. Financials pushing volume. This is what was holding the S&P up all day. They got a high volume high out there. Looks to me like they're going to try to test that, and more than likely they're going to fail right at it. Industrials. And let's see, industrials come back up. They haven't even got to the, to the swing point lows yet, so they haven't even done their bearish retest, regenerate attempt. Uh, that was the industrials. Let's look at the tech sector, XLK. And this one hasn't even got close. Man, I, when, I, when I look at these sectors, and it's a good thing we're going through them tonight, uh, these sectors themselves uh, look pretty bad. Let's look at the consumer durables. Uh, let me see here. Hang on a second. Let me, here we go on the durables. Um, let's see. The durables go up. They test. They got no volume. They're at the highs. There was no volume over there, though. So the durables actually have put in a pretty good run and doesn't look like they're going to sell off. So, that, so, we, so we got financial strong. We got durable strong. Uh, utilities, uh, maybe nothing there still. They're still uh, still testing into that swing point low. So they're still doing bearish retest regens. Healthcare, of course, is doing pretty good. Got over the highs yesterday. Does a doji over. Got more volume. It'll probably stay up there a little bit longer. And discretionary was really hot. So you've got consumer discretionary, healthcare, financials. And consumer durable. So actually, you got four out of the major nine or ten. Uh, so that's that's how this market's hanging, and it's it's kind of an odd group. It's it's not the ones you would expect, uh, but it's definitely you know financials as long as they can hold. And usually the earnings out of the first group of financials, which is the large money center banks, are the best. That's pushing it back up towards the highs and holding this market higher. If I have to take a shot at uh, you know what we do the rest of the week, this is Wednesday. You know tomorrow the next day looks to me like this market is going to pull back. Question is is how far? Let's go back to and I want to go to the stronger one this time, and that is the Nasdaq, and use the Nasdaq as our judge as to where we can come back to. You know you always want to pick your strong or your weak as your as your measuring cup so to speak. Uh, this bar here is the first one and then of course the gap underneath it so I would think this range here is where you have to expect it to come back to best case about 5063 worst case about 5013 50 points lower that looks to be where we're gonna to try to get maybe a little more testing tomorrow it really kinda of depends on if Europe's up or down by the time we start and uh, if they're down already I doubt we get up there uh, if they're up then we'll probably try to test those tops again before we roll that's it for tonight Thanks for joining me. Have yourself a great one, and I'll see you next time. Good night.